As defensed against numerous nomadic groups from the Eurasian steppe, the Great Wall of China is a network of fortifications that was erected along the historical northern frontiers of ancient Chinese states and imperial China. As early as the 7th century BC, certain walls were constructed. Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China, 220-206 BC, later added certain portions. The Qin Wall is largely gone. Later, other succeeding dynasties constructed and kept up numerous sections of border walls. The Ming Dynasty constructed the wall's most well-known parts, 1368-1644. In addition to providing protection, the Great Wall served other objectives such as enforcing border laws, allowing taxes to be levied on goods traveling along the Silk Road, regulating or promoting trade, and managing immigration and immigration. The addition of watchtowers, troop barracks, garrison stations, the ability to signal with smoke or fire, and the fact that the Great Wall's route functioned as a transportation corridor all contributed to the Great Wall's increased defensive capabilities. Distinct dynasties built different courses of border walls. They cover a total distance of 21,196.18 kilometers, 13,170.70 miles, extending from Liaodong in the east to Lop Lake in the west, from the current Sino-Russian boundary in the north to Tao River, Tawa, in the south, along an arc that roughly delineates the edge of the Mongolian steppe. The Great Wall's defense system is now regarded as one of history's most spectacular architectural achievements. The phrase Long Walls refers to both the more cohesive First Emperor's building and the distinct Great Walls built between and north of the Warring States in Chinese history. It first appears in Sima Qian's records of the Grand Historian. The old Chinese pronunciation of the phonetic, which has been reconstructed as asterisk de, and the earth radical combined to form the Chinese character, which means city or fortification. Although it is now far more frequently used as the Chinese word for city, it originally referred to the rampart that surrounded traditional Chinese cities. It was also used to refer to these walls around the states in which they were utilized. By the spring and autumn period between the 8th and 5th centuries BC, the Chinese were already familiar with the methods of wall construction. The states of Qin, Wei, Zhao, Qi, Han, Yin, and Zhongshan all built vast fortifications to protect their own boundaries throughout this period and the Warring States period that followed. These walls were usually composed of stone or were created by pressing soil and gravel between wooden frames. They were designed to withstand attacks from small armaments like swords and spears. Following the Ming army's loss at the hands of the Uruts at the Battle of Tumu in the 14th century, the idea of the Great Wall was once more revived. After numerous conflicts, the Ming had not been able to decisively defeat the Mongol tribes, and the protracted conflict was having an adverse effect on the empire. By building walls along China's northern frontier, the Ming used a new tactic to keep the nomadic tribes out. Instead of including the bend of the Yellow River, the wall skirted the southern limit of the Ordos Desert in recognition of the Mongol rule established there. The Ming building was stronger and more complex than the preceding defenses because bricks and stone were used in place of rammed earth. On the wall, there may have been up to 25,000 watchtowers built. The Ming spent a lot of money repairing and fortifying the walls as Mongol assaults persisted on occasion over the years. Sections close to Beijing, the Ming Dynasty's capital, were particularly robust. Between 1567 and 1570, Qi Jiguang additionally strengthened and repaired the wall, covered some of the Ram Earth Wall with bricks, and built 1,200 watchtowers between Shanhaiguan Pass and Changping to alert the populace of incoming Mongol raiders. It is challenging to define the complete path of the Great Wall because there is no clear description of what a Great Wall is. Along with individual fortifications, the defensive lines feature numerous miles of walls, trenches, and ditches. The National Cultural Heritage Administration of China came to the conclusion that the remaining Great Wall associated sites included 10,051 wall sections, 1,764 ramparts or trenches, 29,510 individual buildings, and 2,211 fortifications or passes. With the walls and trenches spanning a total length of 21,196.18 kilometers in 2012. 
This conclusion was based on existing research and the findings of a thorough mapping survey, 13,170.70 miles. The Great Wall was mostly constructed out of rammed earth, stones, and timber before bricks were used. However, during the Ming, bricks and other materials like tiles, lime, and stone were extensively used in many places of the wall. Construction accelerated because bricks were faster to work with than soil or stone because to their size and weight. Additionally, bricks are more durable and can support more weight than rammed dirt. While more labor-intensive to utilize, stone can support its own weight more robustly than brick. As a result, the wall's base, inner and outer brims, and gateways were all built with rectangular-shaped stones. Most of the wall is lined with battlements, with defensive gaps that are roughly 23 centimeters, 9.1 in, broad and slightly taller than 30 centimeters, 12 in. Guards could observe the surrounding area from the parapets. Contrary to a popular belief, no human bones or body parts were ever included into the sticky rice mortar or any other portion of the wall. Instead, sticky rice mortar was frequently employed to hold bricks together. It was crucial for army units to communicate with one another along the Great Wall in order to summon reinforcements and alert garrisons of enemy movements. For better visibility, signal towers were erected around the wall on hilltops or other high locations. Wooden gates could be a trap for someone trying to pass through. Near the inside of the wall, barracks, stables, and armories were constructed. While parts of the wall north of Beijing and close to tourist attractions have been conserved and even considerably renovated, the wall is in poor condition in many other areas. The wall occasionally served as a source of stones for constructing roads and homes. Graffiti and vandalism are also common in some areas of the wall, and engraved bricks have been stolen and sold for up to 50 renminbi. In order to create room for mining or building, portions have been demolished. The moon cannot provide a view of the Great Wall of China. The myth has been completely disproven, although it persists in popular culture. When viewed from 3 kilometers, 2 miles so far, the apparent breadth of the Great Wall from the moon would be equal to that of a human hair. The English antiquary William Stookley's letter from 1754 has one of the oldest records of the urban legend that the Great Wall can be viewed from the moon. This tremendous wall, Hadrian's Wall, of four score miles, 130 kilometers, in length, is only equaled by the Chinese Wall, which makes a considerable figure onto the terrestrial globe and may be perceived at the moon, Stookley stated. Henry Norman made a similar claim in 1895, stating that apart from its age, it enjoys the repute of being the only work of human hands on the globe visible from the moon. The idea that long, thin things may be seen from orbit may have originated from the late 19th century debate over canals on Mars. The Ripley's believe it or not. Comic strip from 1932 likewise makes the claim that the Great Wall can be seen from the moon. Whether the wall may be seen from low Earth orbit, a distance of as little as 160 kilometers, 100 miles, is a more contentious matter. According to NASA, it can only be seen in very ideal lighting circumstances and isn't much more noticeable than many other man-made things. An image of the wall was captured by Chinese-American astronaut Leroy Chow while he was aboard the International Space Station. Because it was so blurry, the photographer was unsure if he had actually captured it. The Great Wall may be seen from space with the naked eye, under ideal viewing conditions, assuming one knows just where to look, according to a later story from the China Daily based on the image. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more facts videos if you liked our video.